So you guys decided you want to be a gear jamming truck driver, right? On this video, we're about to show you how to do it. Let's get it. Woo, it's cold. Good Lord, it's cold out here. Ah, let's get in the truck. Oh, what's up, guys? Ooh, it's freezing out here. It's uh, 20 degrees out here, man. Oh, so cold. So, so cold. In this video, I wanted to talk to everybody who is actually thinking about getting their CDL and starting their truck driving career. And I'm going to explain on how you go about getting a CDL and also about how you get started with the company driving a truck. Because obviously, you start off with a CDL brand new and you don't have any experience. So we're going to talk about how to get hired and how to start making the big bucks. If you guys don't know already, I'm actually a truck driver here in the oil field of West Texas, and I have experience doing a lot of stuff. Flatbedded, I've done reefer, dry van, I've hauled fuel, and a lot of things out here in the oil field. Here on this channel, we talk everything trucking, and also you guys can get a glimpse into my trucking journey and how I'm doing out here. So if you guys are new to the channel and you guys like trucking, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to hit the like button on this video. So getting your CDL is probably not as complicated as you may think it is. So the absolute best piece of advice I can give somebody who is looking to get into truck driving um, that has never stepped foot in one of these semi trucks before is, uh, you know, they probably only heard what their friends or their family or a coworker, somebody has told them about trucking that you can make all of this money and live this nice, wonderful lifestyle. Well, I have to say it's not as easy as you think it is actually doing the job. A lot of people have the misconception that all truck drivers do is just sit behind this wheel and drive the truck down the interstate or a road or wherever it is in town and they think it's a cake job and that it's easy. Well, it's not as easy as you think. Now, when you're a truck driver, you will be having some pretty long days behind the wheel. Also, if you're a flatbedder, you will be outside securing your load. That means tarping, strapping, chaining. And sometimes on some routes, you could do that twice a day. Not only can some trucking careers be labor intensive like the one that I'm doing now in the oil field, but also if you guys haven't noticed already, uh, truck drivers really don't go home a lot. Most of your weeks will be spent out on the road, away from home, family, your children. Um, so it can take a big toll on you mentally and, um, and, and it, it's really hard as far as stressful. If you got some things going back at home, um, as far as like some problems or something like that, you can't always get home. For example, if you live in Texas like I do and let's say you're up in Michigan and let's say something happens here back at home, sometimes you can't make it back when you need to be back. So that can affect your job here on the road and uh, make things dangerous at times. Especially if your mind is not on the truck and the road and other people around you. It's just something that you need to be mindful of. So if you've never been trucking before, if you've never been in a semi truck or have never done the job, you really need to think long and hard if that would be something that you could do because not everybody can do it. Not everybody can spin weeks upon weeks out. Some of these truck drivers out here spend months out in their truck. If that's something that you can't do or you don't think you can do, you might want to think long and hard if this is a career that you'd actually want. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk about how to get a CDL and ways that you can get your first job. All right, guys, the very first step in getting a CDL is to actually go up to the DMV and they have books uh, for commercial vehicles. Um, I, I forget what the title of it is, but they give you a book. It's for free. You can, uh, anybody can go up there and get it or actually you can go online. Uh, to your local DMV um, website, whatever state you may be in. Um, and I, I guess just look up commercial vehicle book or whatever. Um, and it should be there. They should have some kind of PDF form. But if not, you can always go up to the DMV and get that book. It's for free. What I would do is go study that book like crazy. Go ahead and read through every chapter, every, every line of that book because you will need to know everything that's in that book. Now for the next step, this is gonna be step number two, is that you're actually gonna to have to pass your knowledge test, and that's what they call it, is knowledge test. All right, and it's broke up into four parts in Texas, but for the most part, every DMV, it's about the same thing. Your first part, the very first test that you take will be your general knowledge test. The second part would be combination, and now combination is really only if you're getting a class A CDL to drive a tractor in a trailer. Now the next test that you take at the DMV would be the air brake test. And you take this test because you stop one of these bad boys with air brakes. 
Now in Texas, they also added another part. This is a fourth part test. I didn't know about it when I went through. It was only three parts, but I guess they added another test and that's gonna be commercial rules. And I believe from what I was reading on the web DMV website, this is about um, commercial rules of the road and things like that. So not really sure. Uh, but that's just one other test that you need to take and it's probably in an updated manual uh, as far as in that book that I was telling you guys to get from the DMV. Now those are the tests that are required and you must take those tests and you must pass those tests. All four of those tests or all three of those tests, whatever your state uh, specifies uh, before you can actually take what's called a skills test. Now it's important to know just because you pass all of them exams, you take your last exam, you can't go the next day and take a skills test. You actually have to hold your commercial learner's permit for 14 days in Texas. And now I'm pretty sure it's the same in any other state that you go to or any other state that you're trying to get a CDL in. And also your CLP or your commercial learner's permit is good for 180 days. So you have 180 days to practice, get all the kinks out, get used to the truck before you take your skills exam. Now, step number three is to get a medical examination card or a med medical card is what we call it in the trucking industry. And basically this is just a physical that a doctor signs off on. And it says that you're fit to drive one of these commercial vehicles, that you're not gonna be a health hazard on the road, that there's nothing wrong with you, that you don't have epilepsy, or you're not gonna just pass out while you're driving one of these things. Now you can actually get on Google and look up DOT examinations um, and it should pop up with some doctor in your neck of the woods that does DOT examinations, but you do have to have it and it's about $85, it's not too expensive, but that is something that you always have to do. Truck drivers, once you get a CDL, um, all truck drivers have to go either every two years or every one year to update their medical uh, physical um, and this is something that is required. Uh, for every truck driver in the industry. Now, when I was getting my CDL, we never had to go to a truck driving school. So basically you could do all of your knowledge tests and everything that you needed to do. And then you get your medical certificate, hold your license for 14 days or three weeks, whatever it may be. And then you would take your buddy's truck or somebody who you knew had a semi truck. And then you would go ahead and do your skills exam on that truck. But now I believe it's different. I believe that it is required in every single state that you go through a truck driving school. Now these schools can be cheap or they can be super expensive. And the prices can range from somewhere between $1,200 all the way up to $8,000, depending on the school and what they offer. And from what I've seen online, these schools go ahead and advertise, uh, you can get your CDL in two weeks. Um, some of them I believe are like six weeks long, eight weeks long, I think it really just depends. But that is a state requirement. And I believe if you go to the school, they can actually help you out as far as like a financial aid with them. Um, there's probably some grants and stuff out there that you can get. Now there is another option if you're going to CDL school, if you guys don't have the $1,200 or the $8,000 or $5,000 to go to a truck driving school and actually uh, get your CDL on your own, you can actually apply to one of the mega carriers or what we call mega carriers. And those are gonna be more of the big carriers you see on the interstate every single day, like a Warner, a Swift. Um, I believe Night Transportation has a school. Um, some other ones like Prime, pretty much any mega carrier. And those are gonna be like the big trucking companies that you see on the road. You could actually apply with those companies and they will put you through a school. Now they will pay for your CDL. They will pay all the expenses. Um, they'll let you stay in the hotels for free. Uh, whatever it is to get you through the school, get you a CDL. The only stipulation I believe with most of those companies is that they make you sign a contract that if you want them to pay for your schooling, for you to get your CDL, you must work for them for like a year or two years or whatever it may be. Just remember that some of those schools can get expensive. So I would choose a school based around how much, how much wheel time that you're gonna get and how much experience that you can get before you actually take the skills test or the driving test. Um, and uh, cause that's very important. And also look at the budget, um, see how much you can spend or how much you're willing to invest in this career. Um, I wouldn't pick something that's super expensive, but do make sure that it's a good school and I wouldn't go too cheap. Now, when you go to school to get your CDL, you are probably gonna get behind the wheel of a semi-truck for the first time in your life, 
Most of you probably have never drove a semi truck before, but it is very, very important that you get as much wheel time as possible, not only to help you pass your skills exam um, or your driving test, but also when you get out here in real life to make money, you have no idea how helpful those extra hours behind the wheel will help your career starting off. Now, a lot of drivers have told me coming into the industry, and I've met a lot of them, that they wanna, they wanna make the big bucks, they wanna make the money. And I always tell them one thing, learn how to drive the truck first. If you don't know how to drive the truck, then you're not gonna make any money, and it's gonna take you forever to get from California to, I don't know, Texas or Louisiana, because you really don't know how to drive one of these things. Now, when you're going through school, make sure you ask as many questions as possible to your instructors. There is no such thing as a stupid question. If you didn't understand something or you need some more practice doing something, make sure you let your instructors know so that they know that you need a little bit more work on a certain aspect of driving this truck. Maybe it may be shifting or you may need some extra help when it comes to backing up. Maybe it might be a 90 degree angle that you're backing up into, an offset, whatever kind of backing up that you need to do. Uh, you may need more time at that because backing up is a crucial part of this job and you will do it a lot. Now, the fifth step to getting your CDL is actually going to the DMV to test out or take your driving test. Now, some states do a pre-trip test where you actually have to go around the truck and call out things um, that, that you would do a pre-trip on to the instructors so that they know that you know how to do a pre-trip on your truck. Now, in most states, they will have you do an air brake test and you need to make sure that you understand every single step it, that goes into doing an air brake test because if you miss one step, like in Texas, they will fail you right there and then you'd actually have to reschedule a different day to come in to retake that one portion. Now you will take a driving test. You will drive the semi truck. It's actually not that far. At least when I did the test, it wasn't that far. It was a couple miles that I drove the truck. Uh, basically, they want to take you through some turns, make sure that you understand how to make a turn and how to turn safely. Make sure you're stopping at the stop signs, uh, that you're not stepping on any of the white lines or moving into somebody else's uh, lane of travel, which is you know separating from your lane to go into somebody else's lane. Uh, things like that, make sure that you're signaling properly. Um, and this is actually a pretty nerve wracking uh, part of the entire process because somebody who is testing you is gonna be critiquing your driving um, and basically writing on a piece of paper as you're driving. So it can be a little nerve wracking for people, but I promise you that it's not hard. It's just stressful at times. And that's because you bring a lot of the stress upon yourself because you're a new driver, never drove a semi truck probably in your life and you've only been driving for a couple days and you're having somebody critique you on how you're driving that semi truck but don't worry it's pretty easy to get past that just remember that when you're in school ask questions get as much practice as you can so on that day when that day comes for you to take the actual driving test you're able to successfully pass it with no problems now if you don't pass your driving test don't worry there you can always reschedule and take your exam again i think it's like ten dollars or fifteen dollars in texas to reschedule to take the exam for a second time but don't worry the name of the game is to practice constantly and ask a lot of questions all right so now once you have your cdl in your hand and now it says commercial driver's license on the top instead of commercials learn commercial learner's permit sorry that's a little harder word to say, huh? Commercial learner's permit. I bet you guys couldn't say that 10 times fast, could you? Anyway, once you have your CDL in your hand, you're now ready to go to work and you can work for pretty much any carrier depending on if said carrier's insurance will hire you. Now, a lot of people don't know that insurance plays a big deal in the trucking industry on whether or not you would qualify for a carrier. Now, companies do have criteria that they go by on experience level and what you've done in the past. Um, as far as like going to work for them, but uh, insurance plays a big deal. So most insurance companies, uh, they won't allow a carrier to actually put a driver on to their company uh, unless the insurance says it's okay. And most insurances require you as a driver to have one to two years of experience. Um, and it's just cheaper for the company because if they were to hire you, their insurance then goes up. Don't get discouraged. Most companies won't hire you right out of school but there are always options. I had to turn my light on, it was getting a little dark in here. 
for some people they could get hooked up with an owner operator or somebody who has their own truck who's willing to take a chance on them to operate that truck um, and you could actually make pretty good money coming out of the gate with an owner operator for the first time now your next option is to actually go work for one of those big mega carriers like warner swift knight um, jb hunt or anyone like that most of those companies are self-insured and they can take on new drivers and they do hire a lot of new drivers now the only problem with those companies is that you are going to be getting paid at the bottom of the barrel meaning that you're not going to be making the 65 cent or 75 cents a mile that the experienced driver is going to be making and just remember that those companies do not know you yet they don't know how you are behind the wheel they don't even know if you're going to actually last with the company so they're not going to pay you top dollar to come to work for them but always remember that the first year that you are a truck driver it usually is your worst year only because that you're not getting paid top dollar amount that an experienced driver would make now if you can last past that first year of truck driving and suffer through it usually on the second year or starting your second year you can actually switch to a better company uh, that will hire you and you can actually start making top dollar and top pay now to apply for a mega carrier pretty much any carrier I would try to stick to a local carrier that's probably got a hub near you or maybe the next city over or within your state um, especially if you live in a smaller state try to get with those carriers because it's a lot easier for them to get you home when you need to be home if you go to a carrier let's say if you live in Texas and you work for a carrier in Chicago it may be a lot harder for them to actually get you back to Texas for your home time but that's one tip that you need to keep in mind when you're looking for a carrier but anyway guys we're gonna go see if we're loaded yet um, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here I'll let you go but just always remember that if you guys are new to the channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button down at the bottom of the screen and give this video a like and it would be greatly appreciated but I will leave you there and until next time keep it between the ditches